Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Adarogs1954. Thanks for the suggestion. You asked, how are hard disk drives and solid state drives made? If you've ever saved a photo, installed a game or streamed a movie, then you've relied on one of these tiny yet powerful devices. Hard disk drives and solid state drives are the silent workhorses of our digital lives, quietly storing everything from baby pictures to billion dollar databases. But how are they actually made? What's going on inside that black box on your desk or in your laptop? Stick around as we crack open the mystery and take you inside the high-tech world of digital storage, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the classic, the hard disk drive or HDD. HDDs have been around since the 1950s. Back then, they were the size of refrigerators and could barely hold a few megabytes. Fast forward to today, and they fit in the palm of your hand and store up to 20 terabytes or more. At its core, a hard drive is a highly mechanical device. It stores data magnetically on spinning disks called platters. These platters are coated in a thin magnetic material that can be polarized to represent binary data, ones and zeros. So, how is an HDD made? It all begins with the platter. This is a flat circular disc, usually made from a substrate like aluminum or glass. Yes, actual glass. It's chosen because it's rigid, lightweight, and can be polished to near perfection. The glass or aluminum disc is carefully shaped and smoothed until it's flatter than a sheet of paper, down to the nanometer level. Then, it's coated with a magnetic material typically a thin layer of cobalt-based alloy. But that's not enough. The platter then gets another layer, a protective carbon coating followed by a lubricant layer to prevent wear and tear from the red right heads that will float just nanometers above it. Next comes the read right head, the part that actually reads and writes data to the platter. This tiny component sits at the end of an actuator arm and hovers just above the spinning platter, never touching it. Think of it like a miniature record player needle, except it doesn't touch the surface, ever. If it does, that's called a head crash, and it can be catastrophic. These heads are made using semiconductor fabrication techniques, the same kind used in making microchips. Precision is key here. The head must be small, fast, and accurate, able to detect magnetic changes on the platter as it spins at speeds up to 7,200 revolutions per minute. Once the platters, heads, and actuator arms are ready, everything is assembled in a clean room environment, the kind you'd find in a high-tech lab or hospital. Even a single speck of dust could damage the sensitive inner workings. Inside the casing, multiple platters are stacked on a spindle with red right heads on both sides. An actuator motor controls the movement of the arms, while a small circuit board, the controller, manages communication between the drive and your computer. The entire drive is sealed tight, rigorously tested, and finely labeled and packaged, ready to be installed into laptops, desktops, servers, or backup systems. Now let's fast forward to modern day storage, solid state drives or SSDs. Unlike HDD, SSD have no moving parts. That's right, no spinning disks, no tiny arms. Instead, they use something called flash memory, a type of non-volatile memory that retains data even when the power is off. SSD are lighter, faster, more energy efficient, and more resistant to physical damage. And because they don't rely on spinning disks, they can read and write data almost instantly. So how are SSDs made? It all begins with the flash memory chip, the heart of the SSD. 
Flash memory is built on silicon wafers in ultra-clean semiconductor fabrication plants, also called fabs. These wafers are sliced from high-purity silicon ingots and go through dozens, sometimes hundreds, of steps involving photolithography, etching, doping, and layering. The result is a grid of memory cells that can store bits of information. Modern SSDs use NAND flash, a type of flash memory where cells are stacked vertically in layers, allowing more storage in a smaller space. Some chips today stack over 100 layers. Once the wafer is complete, it's tested, cut into individual chips, and packaged for integration into SSD. But memory alone isn't enough. SSDs need a controller chip, essentially the brain of the operation. It manages everything from wear leveling to prevent one cell from being overused, to error correction, to ensuring your data is written efficiently. Controllers are also made using semiconductor fabrication, though they're more like tiny CPUs. Companies like Fison, Silicon Motion, and Samsung design custom controllers that balance speed, durability, and power consumption. Before any HDD or SSD leaves the factory, it undergoes rigorous testing and quality control. HDDs are tested for vibration, noise, data integrity, and power consumption. They're spun thousands of times to ensure the bearings hold up under stress. SSDs go through performance benchmarks, endurance tests, and power cycling to make sure the memory cells and controller can handle real-world usage. Only after passing these tests are the drives approved for shipping, labeled with their speed, size, and interface type. So now you might be wondering, which one is better? The answer is, it depends. HDDs are still the kings of cost-effective, high-capacity storage. They're perfect for archiving, backups, or storing large amounts of media where speed isn't critical. SSDs, comma, on the other hand, are all about speed and efficiency. They're ideal for operating systems, apps, and anything that benefits from faster load times. In many modern computers, you'll find both an SSD for speed and an HDD for bulk storage. It's the best of both worlds. So the next time you save a file, download a movie, or boot up your computer. Take a second to appreciate the incredible technology quietly working in the background. Whether it's the spinning platters of a hard drive or the electrical pulses of a solid-state chip, both are marvels of engineering born from decades of innovation. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.